In module 6.1, we're going to be changing up the way we're thinking about data modeling just a little bit as we introduce the relational data model. We're going to talk about logical data modeling and terms used in relational data modeling, such as relation, tuple, cardinality, and degrees. The relational data model is really the cornerstone of everything that we talk about with regards to relational database management systems. It was proposed in 1970 by Ed Codd, who used the concept of mathematical relations to define the relational data model. Now, in the relational data model, we talk about databases, which are collections of relations, relations, which are tables that are made up of two dimensions, rows and columns, tuples, which are rows of related data values in the table, attributes, which are columns in the table, and then domains, which are sets of possible atomic values for an attribute. And we're going to go into more depth on each of these terms in the coming slides. But before that, I want to emphasize this very bold, but also very true statement, uh, which you can find in your book. The foundation of modern database technology is without question the relational model. It is that foundation that makes the field a science. Thus, any book on the fundamentals of database technology that does not include a thorough coverage of the relational model is by definition shallow. Likewise, any claim to expertise in the database field can hardly be justified if the claimant does not understand the relational model in depth. Wow, that's, uh, that's a lot to chew on there, but it's also very true in that if we only uh, look at databases and kind of hack out some SQL code and don't really understand this foundational stuff that makes database or relational databases uh, so rock solid, then we're kind of doing a disservice to, uh, to understanding data modeling. So that's why we spend so much time talking about this. Now, what we're really doing at this point is taking our conceptual model, this ERD that's captured our business requirements at a high level of abstraction, and we're now taking it to a, a deeper and more technical level, okay? So we previously weren't constrained by technical limitations, and we got to use things like multi-value attributes and many-to-many -many relationships. Now we're going to get rid of that, and we're going to do something that we can actually implement in our database. Okay, so we're going to get rid of our multi-value attributes, decompose our many-to-many -many relationships, and transform the conceptual schema to our logical schema. And this is going to be kind of a transition step between our technology-independent conceptual schema to our DDL code that we're going to execute uh, in our database. Now, this might be a little bit confusing at first because we do use a lot of the same concepts and terms, but we're going to use them in a slightly different way. So like we've already talked about cardinality, we're going to talk about cardinality in a little different way. And we talked about the degrees of relationships being the number of entities that are participating in a relationship. But now we're going to talk about the degree of a relation, and it's going to mean something different, but we'll come to find it really means the same thing, right? It's just a different way of thinking about it. So we'll explore that in the coming slides. And this idea that relations are different than relationships, but a relationship is a relation, like it's a, it's a little bit fuzzy, but, but we're going to get there and we're going to get there together. So in our relational data model, we're going to talk about relations, which are two-dimensional tables, tuples, which are, which are rows in the tables, attributes, which are columns in the tables. The degree of the relation is going to be the number of attributes in the relation, and the cardinality of the relation is going to be the number of tuples in the relation. And our relations are made up of two components. The heading, which is a single tuple at the top, which lists the attributes, and we also refer to this as the relation schema, and the body, which is the collection of tuples that make up all the data. So in this case, uh, this tuple here is the heading. It has the name of our relation and the list of attributes. And this is the body of the relation. It's our set of data tuples. And we would say this relation has a degree of one, two, three, because there are three attributes and a cardinality of one, two, three, four, five, because there are five tuples, okay? Again, we have our relation heading here, which is our schema, 
And we would say this relation has a degree of three because we have one, two, three attributes and a cardinality of four because we have one, two, three, four tuples. All right, so we've said degree is the number of attributes in a relation, but why would this be the case? Now, recall that an entity is just a collection of related attributes. So imagine this for a moment, that we could consider each attribute of an entity to be its own entity that just happens to be in a relationship associating it with the other attributes. Okay, so if we had this uh, employee, which is made up of these three attributes, imp ID, name, and phone, we could, we never really would, but we could model this as having one entity that just contains all of our employee IDs, one entity that contains all of our employee names, and one entity that contains all of our employee phone numbers, these three entities could just be in a relationship with one another. And when you bring these three entities together, it makes up this larger concept of an employee. And in this case, we would say this relationship has a degree of three because there are three entities participating in this relationship, right? And this is why this employee entity that has three attributes, we would say the degree of this relation is three. Right? And we never would really model this this way, but this is why this concept of degree, the degree of a relationship is how many entities are participating in the relationship, and the degree of a relation is the number of attributes, because this breaks down to be the same thing. Now, let's look at this from the other perspective. Remember when we decompose the many-to-many -many relationship between dependent and hobby? Well, what's the degree of the participation relationship? Well, it's two because there are two entities participating in this relationship. But since, of course, we have to decompose the many-to-many -many relationship, we wound up with this. Participation was actually a gerund that has these two attributes, dependent ID and hobby ID. So what's the degree of this participation relation? Well, it's two because we have two attributes, right? So the degree of the relationship between dependent and hobby was two. And that's because what this relationship really is, is a gerund with two attributes that's decomposing the many to many relationship. And we can really think of any of our relationships like this, right? We could use a gerund to decompose a one-to-many relationship, and that gerund would just have the two attributes uh, that are foreign keys that refer back to the tables that you're uh, joining together, right? So this relationship has a degree of two because there are two entities participating in the relationship, and the gerund that represents this relationship has a degree of two because it has two attributes in it. That's cool stuff. Moving on to the cardinality of the relation, we say cardinality is the number of tuples or rows in a relation. And we've previously said that cardinality is either one or many, right? But to be a little bit more specific, when we say things like many students may take a class, we don't really mean many with completely no bound, right? We couldn't have 10 million students take this class because there's not 10 million students enrolled at the university. What we really mean when we say something like many students may take a class is any number of students up to the number of students we have enrolled at the university may take a class, right? And that is going to be the cardinality of the student relation. And of course, there are other business rules that are going to limit the number of students that can take a class. Like uh, we can't have more students enrolled in a class than we have seats in the classroom. Many doesn't really mean any number, right? It means the maximum number of students in a relation. Looking back to our example of dependence and hobbies, let's take a look at what the degree and cardinality of each of the relations taking place or taking part in this relationship are. So our dependent relation has a degree of four because we have one, two, three, four attributes and a cardinality of one, two, three, four, five because we have five tuples. 
Our hobby relation has a degree of one, two, three, four, because we have four attributes and a cardinality of five because we have five tuples. And then finally, our participation relation, the gerund, has a degree of two and a cardinality of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, right? And each one of these tuples represents a dependent participating in a hobby. So we're gonna have one tuple in this participation relation for every combination of a dependent and a hobby. Now, I suppose there is some value to be gained by just being able to count the number of tuples in a relation, and it is important to understand how much data you have in a relation. However, this becomes particularly important because it allows us to understand how large and complex join operations will be. And the really interesting question we can get at here is what is the maximum cardinality of this relation that joins the dependence relation and the hobby relation? And we're gonna calculate the maximum cardinality by multiplying the cardinality of the two entities that are participating in this relationship. So in this case, our cardinality of five for dependence, our cardinality of five for hobbies means the maximum cardinality of this participation relation is 25. It's going to be a maximum of 25 combinations of hobbies and dependents. Now imagine for a moment that the cardinality of these source relations isn't five, but we have maybe 5,000 dependents and 1,000 hobbies. Then we would say the maximum cardinality of the participation relation would be 5 million, because you could have 5 million combinations of these 5,000 dependents and 1,000 hobbies. And then imagine we add another relation participating in this relationship as well, that each hobby maybe had 10 meetings per year. Well, now between dependents and hobbies and meetings, we're up to 5 million possible combinations, right? So this can get big pretty quickly. So it's important to understand the maximum cardinality. And we're going to find later in the semester that there are ways we can reduce the starting cardinality of relations that are participating in relationships to reduce the maximum cardinality. And this is where we can get into improving the performance of our database by structuring our queries uh, to reduce the cardinalities up front. So very valuable stuff coming up there.